What's up, idols? It's Cece Lesson 3. Welcome back to my channel. Oh, this video, if you're seeing this, this is kind of one that I wasn't thinking I was going to upload, but I decided to go ahead and upload it. This video is going to be compiled of two shorter stories together into one, but because their theme is so similar, I feel like I should just make them one video for you guys. And unfortunately, you see the title and the thumbnail, so you know, you know. The first one, this is a little intro that she wanted me to read. Hey girl, I'll try to keep this brief, but I can't believe in 2023 we still deal with the stuff I'm about to tell you. I've always been warned about the clubs and bars, but this goes beyond that. People always want to defend these assholes saying if you don't like it then leave, but no, fuck that. I'm not about to give them a pass and make this okay. To avoid being sued, unfortunately, I can't name the company involved, but I want you to be aware that what happened to me could happen to anyone, even in today's age. Before we jump into this two for one story time, please help make this video successful by watching until the end, engage with it, leave a like and a comment. For the algo, for the watch, for the engagement, Merry Christmas even, yeah. Wish me a Merry Christmas. Leave a comment, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. Please check out the other story times, rant videos, and travel vlogs that I have on my channel. They're all together in playlists. And as always, thank you so much to my channel members. So for the first story, she wanted to go by her initials. So we're gonna call her MG throughout this first story. MG knew that she wanted to teach English, preferably at a public school. So she tried through Epic and she didn't get it. And I do wanna say, sometimes it may take you more than one try to get through to programs like Epic or Crevia or something. Because even when I was a teacher, I met people, it was like, their third second try and they finally got through so if you don't get it don't be like oh damn i'm not qualified for epic sometimes it has, just has a lot to do with the timing and the need for teachers but just try again like when i got picked it was my first time but there were definitely people who were far more qualified than me who had to apply a few times to the talk program that made no sense to me. I think a lot of it is kind of random and just based on the need and where they need teachers. So anyway, because she didn't get through to Epic, she decided to go the recruiter route and she was trying to talk with several recruiters, trying to get to Korea as soon as possible, but she felt like a lot of them were too passive. They took too long to reply. There was communication issues. So she said, F this, I'm going to fly to Korea myself. I'm gonna get one of those searching for employment visas and I'm gonna find my own teaching job. Now for a bit of background, MG said that she's Canadian, she's biracial, half black, half white, she has long brown curly hair, hazel eyes, and darker skin. And she knows how in demand teachers are in South Korea, so she didn't expect to have the difficulty that she had. A lot of the positions that needed to be filled, she saw them have weird specific requirements like blonde hair, blue eyes, Canadian, American only. And like, she's qualified enough. She has tutoring experience. She has her degree. She likes kids. She's good with kids. And she also had tutoring jobs at uni. So not only did she tutor like in high school, she tutored in uni. As you can imagine, this was a very discouraging realization because in a lot of countries in the West, for example, you can't outright say, oh, I want someone with a double D chest size. I want someone who's a size two dress. Must be attractive. Like you can't outright hire someone based on their appearance. But in Korea, you can, and it happens all the time. And again, I know making this type of video, people are gonna be in the comments like, well, if you don't like it, you can leave. There's the door, bitch! No, that does not make it okay. That No, stop it. Because if these Koreans and other Asian people come abroad and they experience the same thing, they're not gonna be like, well, I guess I should just go back to Korea. No, there's laws to protect them for when it happens to them. But when you're in Korea, there's not a lot that we can do about it when it happens to us. We saw how bad all that stupid Asian hate was, and there were laws, there were repercussions for those types of people. They were punished, they were humiliated, dragged on social media, fired from their jobs. If the same thing were to happen to Korea, crickets. So anyway, sorry, MG finally found a job post that did not outright say blonde hair, blue eye, white woman. So she sent off her resume and hoped for the best. Now because she knew the position needed to be filled ASAP, she wasn't surprised at all when she heard from them like the next day. And the first thing they asked her was why she didn't have a photo of herself with her application. But before she could reply to that, they sent another email said, never mind, it's okay, when can you come in for an interview? So she's dressed in a navy blouser with matching navy pants and a blouse. She has her hair pulled back and like a curly ponytail. So pretty presentable you can't go wrong with that look first thing they said to her when they saw her was oh i thought you were canadian she said yeah i'm, I'm from canada <laughs> and then they said oh you don't look the way we expected and like she's dressed professional enough so she's like hmm i think i know what they're talking about so she decided to elaborate further and said oh i'm sorry i don't understand that's when they said you're quite dark hey yo hey yo what are we talking about here mm -mm. So 
So she's trying to keep it professional. She awkwardly laughs like, haha, yeah, yeah, we're from Canada. My family's from Canada, but my mom has roots from Africa. So then they start to ask her questions and they should be asking her questions about what makes her qualified for this job. Why does she want this job? What could she bring to the table? But do you know what they started asking her instead? They asked her if she always looks this dark. They asked her if she ever wears her hair straight. They asked her how often she bathes herself. They asked her if her mother has a criminal past. And that was just a few of the highlights to give you guys the overall vibe and impression of how this interview went. So then she's like, huh, I'm sorry, but you guys gonna ask me about my qualifications and why I wanna be a teacher? So they're like, oh, oh, I forget myself, yeah. So they asked her one question about teaching and they got back to these ignorant ass questions. The interview concluded rather briefly with them saying we're sorry but we don't think you look the part for this academy we'll be in touch if anything changes thanks for coming in it's like oh i'm sorry i don't look the part what do you mean like she knows what they mean but she wants them to elaborate say it say it with your chest so they said when they saw her name and saw that she was from canada they expected a white woman so she's like oh i'm sorry why did you want a white woman why do you prefer a white woman to teach they said it's the english and western ideal and it's preferred she's like yeah but you know not all europeans and westerners are white and i think these students need to see and know that. They said, we know it's not the reality, but it's what's ideal. With that, MG goes completely quiet, just... And then she just gets up and leaves the interview. It's over. She knew it was better to stay quiet and leave before she lost it and just went off. Y'all gon' make me lose my mind. Y'all gon' make me act a fool. Y'all gon' make me lose my cool. Uh, so after that first job interview, you can imagine that she didn't have the most optimistic outlook on this job hunt in Korea. But you know what's crazy? The very second interview that she had at a different company went well. It went perfectly. They hired her pretty much instantly, said, oh my god, can you start in like three days? They told her she was pretty. They asked her why she wanted to teach and said that they would love to have her be a part of their academy. Interview appropriate questions like, what would you do if a student did X, Y, and Z? What experience do you have? How would you respond to this situation? Why is teaching important to you? you appropriate interview questions for an English teacher. So what the fuck was that first place about? Like, what is, I want to know the name of this academy. MG, congratulations on the job, Sunsing Neem, by the way, yeah. But if you're still in Korea when I'm there, can we, can you please let me know the name of the school? Because, like, I will meet you, and I really want to know. Chukahamnita, Sunsing Neem, and thank you for sending in this story. So that was the brief one, right? And uh, we have another brief one. But the themes eerily familiar from that first story and this one we're about to get into. I said this before but um I recently went through my spam folder and I realized that a lot of these emails people are sending in with their story times are going to my spam folder for some reason so I have a lot to catch up on so in this video you guys get a two for one. So for this story time we're gonna reuse the name Tiana because we got a, a black queen that leads this story. <laughs> now for years Tiana has dreamed of visiting South Korea. She knew that she wanted to go there first and experience what it was like for a month or so before just uprooting everything and straight up moving there. And luckily she made a really good friend. Like it, was, it started off as like an online pen pal thing, but her name was Sumi. She's very well traveled. Like she's been to Toronto, New York, uh, Reykjavik, Sydney, Rio, Chicago, London, like homegirl travels. And when she told Sumi that she was going to Korea, she was like, oh my God, this is gonna be lit. I can't wait to show you around my foreign friends. I love making foreign friends. So Tiana planned to stay in Seoul for two weeks, Jeju for a weekend, Busan for a week, and one week just a free roam. Like if she wanted to visit uh, Daegu or Daejeon or Incheon or Gwangju, or just rest, you know, that's a lot, that's a lot. So Sumi and Tiana made plans to stay at the same hotel in Seoul together. She said, that way, I'm always there, you're never alone, you have a buddy, I can show you around, I can help you out with stuff, and we can just spend as much time together as possible. By the way, they're both college age. Sumi is a student in Seoul, I don't know which university there. She sounds smart, so probably SNU. <laughs> and Tiana's also a college student. So as soon as Tiana lands, as soon as they check in, they head straight for Hongdae, because they're college kids. They're having the time of their life, they're taking pictures, they're dancing together, they're having Shots. Then suddenly there was a boy that approached Tiana. Now the first thing this boy did was like gesture for Tiana to like lean in. So she does. She's just like, huh? What's what? She gathers her ear and he just goes, wow. Sorry, did I catch you off guard? And of course that made her kind of jump because that was sudden. He's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but wow, you're, you're so pretty. So he's like, where are you from? She said, oh, I'm from Texas. And he said, oh, wow, I have a brother that studies in Oklahoma. It's not Texas, but close enough, I guess. And that is random, right? It seems so random. I remember I had a co-teacher who had a brother who was... It was either Louisiana, Tennessee, or Alabama, somewhere in the South, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Being a minority and a foreigner in a red state, I am sorry. So anyway, Tiana was feeling this boy and Sumi was like, oh, he's cute, Ray. You know, she's just trying to get all the cheese me. And Sumi's like, you know, if you think he's cute, you really should go for it. Like you're here on vacation. <laughs> you know, at this point, she's having a good night. She just got to Korea. She's tipsy. She's having fun. She's looking for a good time. He's fine. And then Sumi says, oh, you know, if you do anything with him, just please make sure you're safe. She said, make sure it's what you want to do and make sure he wears a condom because Korean boys don't like to wear condoms. You little nasty! And then Tiana said, well, I don't like babies or STDs, so he don't got a choice. <laughs> Sumi also suggested if you do decide to like sleep with him and have some fun, you should do it at our hotel. I can just go home. I live in Seoul. It's not a problem for me. But that way you can kick him out when you're ready. You know the area. It's more safe. By the way, let's call this boy Quan. So Quan and Tiana continue to dance and vibe and flirt. And she was feeling him more and more. And she said, you know, I hadn't had sex in almost a year, so... I think he's gonna get it. So Sumi reminded Tiana what she said. She hugged her goodbye and then she went home and said, let me know if you need anything. Call me, text me, I'm here. So Tiana told Quan that she wanted to go somewhere quieter and I swear to God, this is the second time in a story time that the girl says, yeah, let's get out of here, go somewhere quieter. And the guy thinks she literally means somewhere quieter. So he tries to take her to like a less crowded bar or outside for a second or a dead club. She's like, no, no, my hotel. Like, So when he finally catches on to what she's saying, he says bye to his friends and then he follows Tiana out the front door of the club. So then Quan said, oh, so where are we going? And Tiana said, my hotel. So when he smiled, I was like, oh, really? And don't, don't get attached. Like he sounds all cute and harmless now, but please don't get attached. He's an asshole. So they stopped by the store to get some soju, some snacks and some condoms. And they head for her hotel room. Now, as soon as they got to her hotel room and closed the door behind them, he immediately started to undress himself. <laughs> <laughs> Tiana's like, wait, bro, like, pause. Can we chill for a second? Do you, do you want to shower? Do you want to have a snack? Do you want to relax first? So Quan said, oh, I'm so sorry. You just make me so excited. I never felt like this before. It's a shock. So Tiana's like, a shock? Like, what do you mean? Why is it so shocking? Quan said, you're a pretty black girl, but black girls are ugly, so it's a shock. <laughs> hey, that's true. Know your fucking place, trash. I'm sorry, what? You know what's sad? This does not surprise me in the slightest. You guys have no idea how often I've heard that, especially since doing YouTube, that I'm pretty for a black girl, or I'm pretty and I don't look black, or because they think I'm pretty, they don't believe that I'm black. What the fuck kind of backhanded compliment? It, it must well be like, thank you. That means so much coming from you, stranger. And I mean, I hate to say it, like, yeah, you would expect these type of comments from people who aren't black, but I get them a lot from black men too. They say stuff like, normally I don't fuck with black girls, but like, I might make an exception for you. Boy, if you don't get- I feel like a lot of it is these- uh, let me not- this is about to start a whole nother rant. Back to the story. So of course Tiana goes, what? And asks for some clarification, hoping he did not mean what he just meant. <laughs> but nah, bruh. Quan doubled down. This is what he said. Opa doesn't like black girls normally. Opa doesn't normally like black girls, so Tiana should be lucky that he's making an exception for her. And naturally, with that, Tiana turned all the way off and was like, I'm sober, get the fuck out. She's like, why do you think that's okay to say? What if I told you that I think all Asian men are ugly and have small penises? But for you, I'll make an exception because you're kind of cute. And he just goes, oh, thank you. Then she was like, let me ask you this. Why do you think black women are ugly? He said he doesn't like dark skin, crime, thick hair, and ghetto girls. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe in, boy. You know, she took a deep breath, trying to collect herself, but also as to avoid popping off on this fool. I mean, at this point, he's absolutely not getting any ass, like clearly, but she says she kind of hoped to educate him and maybe understand this point of view. Cause we hear this all the time that like black women are ugly and black women are the least attractive group of women. So then she brought up the fact that in the West until relatively recently, you know, with people like anime, people like K-dramas and K-pop and stuff. Now, Asian men are kind of more on an evil playing field because people have always aspired like, oh, black men are sexy, oh, white men are sexy. And now Asian men are starting to be considered sexy as well. So she said, you know, up until relatively recently, we see Asian men as like nerdy, emasculated, weak, soft, girly types. Do you think that's okay? So then he gets upset and go, that's ridiculous. Of course not, that's not okay. Congratulations, you played yourself. So you get it then. She says stereotypes are not a reason to dismiss a whole group of people you know what i mean you can't say i don't like black people because crime and ghetto we're not all the same just like you're not like this nerdy feminine soft boy like everybody thinks you're like bruh bruh she said you don't have to be attractive to my curly hair and my dark skin but you don't shouldn't tell me that i'm not attractive or that my people aren't attractive because we're criminals and we're ghetto 
that's not true that is a stereotype so then she said there was a long pause of just silence between the two of them and he said can i have a drink fuck no <laughs> she was like you bought the soju you can take it with you i kind of think like this is done like you should just go home now and he said oh okay i'm sorry can i get a kiss what more do you want from me <laughs> She laughed and said, absolutely not. And then he finally said sorry again before he left the hotel. At this point, Tiana could not wait to tell Sumi what happened. She was hoping that Sumi was still awake. And Sumi was a little worried because she called her so quickly. She's like, oh my God, like, are you okay? That, that didn't take long. So she asked her to come back to the hotel so she could tell her what just went down in person. They had a night of girl talk, reflection, and Sumi just sounds like such a real one. She's like a really well-traveled girl. And what she said, I agree with completely. This is what she said. She says she thinks it's the media and it's ignorance. People who don't travel only know what they see on TV. Foreigners think Korean men are all dreamy gentlemen because of K-dramas, when in reality, so many Korean men are bitter towards women for not having kids, wanting equality, being feminist, and not having to do military service. Korean people see Western as more rich, liberal, loose. Black people are shown as criminals, ghetto, rappers, or they play sports. We don't get to see them normalized as lawyers, doctors, and teachers like the rest of us. She said because she travels, she knows it's more than what she sees on TV. Because Europeans have colonized so much of the world, they're seen as the powerful ones and their influence, including their appearance, is widespread. You look white, you're successful. Sumi, can you call me? <laughs> Sumi and her are absolute besties. I want to meet Sumi too, please. I want to meet you too, Tiana. And MG. He said, anyway, that was Kwan's loss because Tiana was absolutely beautiful. Everyone can be absolutely beautiful. Everyone is absolutely beautiful. That was two story times with a very similar theme that I felt like I should do a two for one. Anyway, I hope you guys didn't get as upset as I was whilst reading those emails. <laughs> We're like two weeks away from 2024 and we still got to deal with this. Anywho, MG, thank you so much. Tiana, thank you so much. Sumi, call me. Please check out the videos that are about to pop up on the end screen in those playlists. Thanks for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Annyeong! Happy holidays!